Hi everyone, welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Uh, today is the long-awaited day that I will be doing my art studio tour. Um, you guys have been waiting for this for years. Now, the reason I had not done it before was because I had a horrible mess in here. I mean, I saved crap and had piles of stuff all behind me here that came out into the room and it was just stacked everywhere, piled high on my table. It just got out of control. So I couldn't do a studio tour. I'm going to do a studio tour today and then I will redo my studio tour again next year, at least by this time, hopefully earlier, because I will be moving. Um, my husband's going to retire and we're going to be moving up north to the home that we built quite a while ago. We built this house probably 25 years ago, but we didn't finish it completely. We were using it as a cottage, but it was unfinished. We didn't have door jams and doors. We put like curtain rods up and stuff like that. But um, but anyway, now we're finishing it all. Um, we're scrambling to get it finished, hiring people to do stuff. And one of the things that I'm having done is I'm having an art studio built. The bedrooms are too small. They're smaller than this room even. Um, probably. Yeah. Yeah. They are smaller than this room. And, um, they were built that way because initially we weren't sure if we'd be using it as a cottage or if they'd just be guest rooms when people come up or whatever, but like they hold a queen size bed and a dresser and that's it. So, um, I just didn't want to have another crowded art studio. I figured I deserved something better when we retired and had the money to do it. So, um, I'm having one built. It's going to be um, like a she shed, if you've heard of she sheds. Um, I'm going to have a front porch off the front so that I can sit outside and paint if I want, or I can paint inside my studio. I want French doors, if possible, so that I can open it wide to air. Um, it should be beautiful. That's pretty much uh, the gist of it. So I'm going to show you my studio now. And gradually, this is going to be getting boxed up over the next several months, um, little by little. The stuff that I'm not using right away, I'm going to uh, take and store up north. Um, probably a lot of my books and things like that. But anyway, I'll show you my stuff today. It may look very cluttered to you, but it is my orderly chaos, is what I call it. And... Um, it feels comfortable and like home to me. Sure, I'd love more space and areas to put everything so that it's nice and clean all the way around, but um, my next studio will be like that. I hope. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, initially when you look from outside the door into my studio, this is what you would see. Over there in the corner I have um, all of my books in that china cabinet, most of my books. And then I have another shelving unit here. So I'm just gonna start here where this white shelf is, and I'm just gonna go completely around the room so that you can see it all. And over here, I have a um, shelving unit that I got at Ikea and put together and bought the lights to put in there. It was very simple, even I could do it. It's a matter of gluing them up there. I used that instant tack to put them up and then wired it and put the switch on the inside and it was very simple to do. I've got a switch right here so I could turn my lights on and off. And um, the only thing is, is it doesn't light up the bottom two shelves, but that's fine because I've got clutter down there anyway. So up at the top, you can see that I have all of my finished sketchbooks that are done, or most, most of my sketchbooks that are done. And there's a couple there that are unfinished, and there's one new one. Then down a shelf, over to the left here, I have, whoops, I just dropped something. I have my finished um, journals that I have used. Um, this beautiful thing here is actually a little shelf that hangs on a wall. My great-grandfather made it. He did inlaid wood, and his work was phenomenal. I've got more of it up north at my other house that is just gorgeous. But I gave one of these to my nephew, and 
then I kept the other one and I just love it. And I love to stand it like this, but we'll see what I do. Um, I also have a couple books here and then this is me and my husband in our younger years <laughs> when my hair was longer and blonde. Um, and then I just have these baskets that I fill with various sundry things. This little thing on the on this side is a bunch of drawers. I used that a lot for my um, jewelry um, making when I was doing when I was doing that sort of art. And then this little book on the right that says "Mom." I've shown that. I think I showed it on Instagram. In fact, it may still be there. But that's a book that I made my mother when she started with her Alzheimer's and was getting forgetful. So I made her that book so that she would remember me and it has my photos and stories of when I was a kid and her and I together. Then over here, this is what you usually see um, behind me when I'm doing my videos. You'll see all these paintings on the wall. Somebody once asked me, is it okay to hang your art in your own home? And I thought, well, why not? If you're proud of it, display it, you know? I hang it here. Um, the ones that I like, I'll hang here. Uh, and also things that we did in our videos. Some of these are old and my painting has changed quite a bit, but a few of them are newer. Um, then this table, well, let me go across the wall first. This lamp, I always move for my videos or most of the time it's moved, but I like this light. I can aim it down toward where I'm working so that I have light on one side, but I also have this Diva Ring light, which is a photography light and you can adjust how high or low the lighting is. Um, I just keep it on the highest setting. And the nice thing about these ring lights is that they the cast shadows are very minimal. So when I'm painting, you don't get large dark shadows from where I'm working. And then these little things that are hanging here are where I put my camera so that you can see me work. Then I have my paper towel hung on the side. So sometimes when I'm painting, all of a sudden the camera will bounce. It's because I'm grabbing a paper towel. <laughs> but um, then I keep my iPad in front of me and my Bose speaker there so that I can listen to audio books or music while I am painting. And I have my little Pentelic Aqua Journal out there now because I need to do day 23 of Inktober. <laughs> but um, there's the new palette that I got. And... Um, I have a series of drawers over here that I keep uh, things like ink, um, ink tents, pencils, and all of my oh, all of my um, Prismacolor pencils are there, and they're all put in by color. So I have three or four drawers of those. Whoops! And then on top is a tea box that I keep all of my current my watercolors in except for that one on top that's too long to fit. Over here, I have a um, two little drawer things. I think they're for makeup or whatever, but I put all of my, my um, washi tapes in these drawers, and each one of them is filled. That's why some of them are sideways. But, uh, and then I have some of my older brushes and synthetic brushes that I don't use very often in the back or the ones that I use for gouache painting. And then these are the ones that I use most of the time. And I keep them on this little spinning thing. Um, it's just something I bought on Amazon, a little Lazy Susan that you can put in your kitchen cabinet or whatever or in a bathroom cabinet. And I just put that on there. And I keep some various things on there, like my masking tape, rem masking fluid remover and stuff like that. And my water, dry my brush dryer, my watercolor brush dryer, that's a pen. Um, then I have my other favorite dip pen right there, the one with the feather. I brought these leaves in. One of them I wanted to curl so that I could paint it and practice those. And in the back there, I have a little warmer for my coffee or for old candles, which you'll see in a minute. I have them all lined up on my windowsill, the ones that no longer burn. And then that way I can um, um, heat them on there and still use them up. And hi, you can see me here. <laughs> and then I have one of those Lazy Susan things here, which, you know, I have so much crap in there I don't use. I really should clean it out. But... The stuff that I keep all my daily stuff in is on this Rasgog cart right here. 
Let me back up so that you can see it. That's my Rascog cart. And uh, I put every everything on there is stuff that I use on a daily basis, like down here, my masking tapes, uh, stuff like that. I have pens and things that I use. Um, I dropped this on the floor when we first started. Let me grab it. My carpet is ruined, so just ignore my carpet. I used to get oil and acrylic paint all over it. So Then, these are all scattered, but um, because I've been moving the card around, but I magnetize my fountain pens that I use all the time right on the side there. And I put my little stampers, my date stamp, and stuff on the side with instant tack, or whatever that stuff is called. And they stick on really well. I got watercolor pencils there. On the bottom I have some different papers that I use frequently. Um, and then on the back side I have um, my cutting board and a couple watercolor palettes. And uh, that's pretty much everything. Oh, there's some stamps on top bunch of my little inks that I keep in this container. And like I said, it's orderly chaos. I know where everything is. Um, so I've done that. Over here in the back is a cabinet that is broken. So when I open the drawers, they don't want to close right. But uh, the first four or five drawers are all um, watercolors piled up different palettes that I've done reviews on, etc. And gouache palettes, and there's more watercolor palettes. See, now my drawers are starting to get stuck. And more tape and stuff like that, and it goes down. And down at the bottom, I've got drawers of ink and that kind of thing. On the wall over here, I have this little box thing that I got at Hobby Lobby. And for the longest time, I kept my acrylic paint in there when I was acrylic painting a lot a few years back, and it was easy. I had them all in there by color, and I could just grab what I needed, and then I had a glass palette down on my table, and I would stand next to it with my big easel and my big canvases, and I could paint things like that up there. But um, I had my Tombows on top, some other fine liners. I have some of my old markers in there my whatever those twinkle whatever watercolors I forget what those are and then my brush or my tube squisher for when my tubes get empty um and that is pretty much it so this is where I work right here this is where I do all of my video recording like I said over here I have another little um, thing that I store different stuff on, like books that I'm currently looking at, um, my Windex, my Goo Gone, which I use all the time to clean. Under here, I have a dog, <laughs> and I actually have a spirograph, which is so much fun. I've been having a lot of fun with it recently. I saw somebody using one on, on YouTube, and I thought, you know what, I should get one of those. And back here, I have um, a... Uh, bench and it is filled with paper and all sorts of stuff. Okay, I got paint all over it too. Um, so anyway, I do have some paintings in here, but underneath all of that, there are boards, there are canvases like crazy, um, little canvases in there for plein air painting, all sorts of stuff. So I just store it all in there and it disappears. And I've got to wipe that green paint up because that is from a recent painting I did. <laughs> and then over here in the corner, then over there in the corner are some large watercolor sheets. I've got a tube of watercolor paper, which I have yet to use. It's by B Paper, but it's, uh, you know, 100% cotton. And I have a cutting mat, large one. I have a portfolio. And in the back, I have some of that suede, suede board that is used for, it was used for a course that I was taking online and I never used it. But it, it, I got two large pieces and you can cut it down to size and you use it for, um, I don't know if it was for pastel or maybe it was for colored pencil or something. 
Then over here, this was an old china cabinet we got when we bought our house. And I decided, it used to be filled with yarn, and I decided to fill it with my art books. So I have art books like crazy. Um, on the sides are the ones that I probably wouldn't use as much. And then toward the middle are my watercolor books so that I can reach them. Like over here I have acrylic books that I'm not using. Um, in the center are watercolor. These are all watercolor and um, urban sketching books and things like that. A lot of them I've done reviews on. And down here I have some more. And then over here on the right I have DVDs and things that I had bought years ago. So I have a ton I've got a really huge book collection. One of these days I'll probably give some of them away or maybe do a giveaway or whatever. Then down on the bottom uh, is a drawer which just houses some empty boxes and some some of these little things that I use for um, recording. And then on this spot down here, down here I've got some extra brushes. There's a bunch that go all the way back. I've got several, several um, jars of brushes that go all the way back to the corner. Um, and over here I have different MDF panels, some old painted panels that I could paint over with oil paint. These are all Fabriano watercolor. I actually forgot I had. So that's good to know. They're all 16 by 20, I believe. And so that's it for that cabinet. Then moving on around the room, let me straighten this up. Moving on around the room, I have these two carts, um, which have a lot of pastel stuff on the side down here. I have my little printer for my phone um, when I'm taking pictures for journaling. That little purse there actually holds my Bose speaker when I'm traveling. Then I have things like some of my um, pan pastels, some other pastels, Prismacolor. Up there, I have my Copic markers. I used to keep them in this bin over here on the, on the wall, but then I started traveling with them. So I got this container, which is really cool. I'll show it to you real quick here. Um, just undo it. It uh, is really cool because the sides Velcro and come open and then you can put all of your markers in by color, which is really nice. Um, most of these are Copics, either sketch or regular um, Copic markers um, or the chows, I mean. And then I do have a few touch markers in here. But anyway, they're great. And in the back, then I have a marker book. There's more room for markers on the back. And in here, which is empty, I have a micron marker there. And then I can just travel with this whole thing. And I've got everything I need to do marker sketches. The only thing is, is I don't know how to marker sketch very well. So I want to learn because I'm very interested in it. And I was going to do more of it with Doodle and Sketch, but you guys always say, do watercolor, do watercolor. But one of these days I'm going to do markers again because after a while I need a change, you know. And then when I'm storing these, I store them on their side so that they're not upright. I have some more um, pentallic uh, water color field books here that are real big and won't fit on my bookshelf. They're 11 by 14. So um, let me just stick those back in there. And then down there on the bottom, these wood box or these cardboard boxes are mats that I use. Um, like uh, 8 by 10, it's an 11 by 14 for an 8 by 10 opening, 5 by 7 openings, um, 4 by 6 openings, all sorts of different sizes. This is my box of magnetic clips. Got some different paper over here, gloves, another empty box. This is where I keep my cloth rags for um, wiping paint. And I think I have some more markers back there. This is my set of um, Spectrum Noir markers that I keep in the back there. Don't use those much. I've got a box of gel pens, 
some brush holders, another tripod, book tape, fan, some paintings. And those boxes there I use for my carrying my journaling stuff. Um, they're really cool boxes. I'll have to show you guys sometime. Then let me move on over here to this side. i got to move my chair out of the way here. This cabinet I also bought at Ikea the same time I bought this one. And this uh, cabinet is like a china cabinet. It's got three drawers. And I keep a lot of my mediums in there from different painting mediums like for acrylic and oil and uh, different stuff like that. So I do have some more sketchbooks up there from when I first started painting. Those are mostly completed, but I've got glazing mediums and all sorts of stuff in here. Glues, charcoal, graphite powder, charcoal powder, um, some pastel mediums that I made. I, I used pumice and was making my own pastel paper. Whoops, it got dark. Sorry about that. Um, some of my acrylic paints. These are Canadian paints. These tri-arts are really awesome if you're an acrylic painter. Um, alcohol inks, more of those. More Tombow markers in that box. Um, more jars. Essential oils. My Dr. P.H. Martin's India inks and watercolors. And different set pencil sets. Most of these are graphite. Some of them are like Prismacolor watercolor pencils. Different watercolor pencils. My Derwent's here. Um, and my old um, gouache uh, palette is right there. And then another another bowl. I love those bowls for my watercolor painting. I don't know if I showed you over here, but my watercolor water is a huge bowl. This is like a two quart, I think, two and a half, two quart bowl, something like that. So, um, in the drawers here, I've got some old palettes, uh, different things like that, uh, some sponges, that kind of thing. Down here, I have papers and envelopes and stuff like that that are stored. Down on the bottom, the same thing, graphite papers and other papers. And these are all pretty much full. <laughs> then, over here. Over here is my closet, and what I did was took the doors off completely, stored them in my basement, and um, that used to be my jeweler's bench where I did all of my jewelry making. That big canvas over there is for a friend I have to do an oil painting on, and I've been putting it off for, oh, I don't know, five, six months. <laughs> over here on the floor, are all of my rubber stamps and my jewelry things um, behind that black um, etcher bag. There's some jewelry stuff. And then up here in the corner, I have a lot of jewelry wire, beads, that kind of thing. And the same with down here. I have them all labeled gemstones, crystals, glass beads important family photos, and that kind of thing. This is just paper. And then all across the bottom, I have various bags that I use for different things. It's a mess right now. And then in the corner, I have my old jewelry display boxes underneath the, um, underneath in the back there. And I also have some, all of my acrylic paints that are probably drying up at this point. Right now, instead of doing, because I don't do jewelry so much anymore, I use that for my oil painting table. If I want to do small oil paintings on a small easel, I will use that. I do have a larger easel that I use for big paintings, like things like that. Um, back behind here, hidden, I have some glycine paper, which I use to store over my pastel paintings so that they don't rub. Because... Um, I don't use fixative. I'm totally against fixative. It does not adhere your your um, pastel or anything down. Um, you can rub it, and you'll rub your pastels right off. So I was taught by my teacher to always use glycine paper, which is why I bought that. Back here, then, I also have my painter's umbrella, 
and then behind that my large portable easel. Um, back here I have my Vintage, um, my Big Kick, and another paper cutter and some knitting stuff and that kind of thing. Up there is some more stuff that I use for mixing essential oils like um, Epsom salts and that kind of thing. When I need to do an anti-inflammatory thing, I'll mix them up for myself. And that teddy bear was my teddy bear that was given to me by my brother when I was about seven. He was in the Air Force during Vietnam. And he came home on leave and had given me that teddy bear. And I loved it my whole life. <laughs> so I'll never get rid of it. And then the monkey was given to me by my husband. Um, what else? Got my... DSLR camera up there, but it's an older camera, so I can't use it for filming. It doesn't focus well enough when my hand moves. It gets too blurry. More acrylic paints. Um, in those boxes up there are some old paintings that I need to go through. Um, more jewelry stuff. And then over here on this side, I have old jewelry books, more jewelry things. Some boxes for my iPads that I've had over the years. I thought I could use them for storage because they're heavy-duty boxes. I have this thing for boxes. I like to reuse and recycle. So then back here, I have extra. Um, these are all shields for iPads and such. You know, those plastic things, the glass plastic stuff. And then these are all excess pencils. Uh, charcoal, more Stadler pencils. I buy them by the box. Micron, micron pens that I buy by the box. These are my white pens that I buy by the box. Um, uni balls, uh, black wing pencils. And these are a box of what are these ones? Uni pins, point fours. So I've got lots of stuff back here. When I'm running low or a pen runs out. That's where I go, or when I need pencils. Um, and then over here, I got this little thing that I was going to paint over, and I never painted it. I hate it. I think it looks hideous, but it was a CD holder, CD case holder. And I thought, oh, I can use that for something. And right now, I'm using it for some rubber stamps that I would use more often. And I don't rubber stamp very often, but those are just some of them that I would use, like Christmas and Snoopy's and stuff like that. And then on the bottom, there are more rags. I'm not sure why those ended up down there, but they did. And so we have completed my room. Somebody was saying to me, I told her I love Snoopy. She did a Snoopy painting or something. And I said, oh, my God, I'm obsessed with Snoopy. Here's more. Snoopy, my clock, and on the hour it'll play Christmas carols, but I have that unplugged. <laughs> I don't want to hear them every hour. These are some of my older paintings. That was a plein air that I did, um, and that is done in, is that oil or acrylic? That's done in oil. That one's done in oil up there. That was hideous. That's an old acrylic painting that I did. And that was a doodle and sketch that I did, if you guys remember that one. So, we've made it all the way around the room. Okay, one last spin around the room. That is my doorway coming in. And this is where I do my work. And my filming. And then where I keep excess canvases, papers, books... Up there are all my extra candles. <laughs> um, I love candles, too. And this cabinet over here. And then my closet. And this closet was really great. I just had, we measured. My husband came up with a um, countertop, and just a cheap white one. And he put up some framework. There happened to be some shelves back there. And he used some supports that were supporting the shelves. And put some on that. This thing is strong enough I could sit on it now, but I wouldn't. And um, some old Christmas lights <laughs> that light it up a little bit. And that's pretty much it. So now you guys have seen my entire art studio. 
And when I get moved, it should look lots nicer. So everybody have a great day. Remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Bye-bye.